Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party knockoff review. This is my first figure I've had from Neo Arts. I believe they've done the entire range of MMC Feral Rex on a one-to-one -one ratio. This is the NT-07, their Leonidas Beast Muscle. This is of course a bootleg of the perfect effects Leonidas Beast Muscle. Uh, the packaging is a lot more simplistic than what we got with that beautiful artwork that Perfect Effects delivered. They literally have a shot of him on the front, some kind of schematical drawings, and my box took a little bit of a battering from DHL. But that's not only my Primus's fault, that's the lovely people over at DHL. On the back of the box, we've got him in his robot mode, in his beast mode, and a list of all of those accessories. Now, as this is a one-to-one -one replica, basically it comes with all of those amazing accessories that we got with Leonidas. But apparently, Neo Arts have improved him, and where we were getting the breakages on the likes of the shoulders and that waist joint, apparently this is all now rectified. So... We shall see. I'm going to call this guy Neonidus. Uh, with Neonidus, we get a two-tier tray system. I think... I'm, I'm sure we got a three-tier tray system with Leonidas. Uh, I'll have to go back and check. I don't own him anymore. I sold him before any of the breakages could occur. Um, yes, we have... Uh, the lower tray which has the base and the guns and the crossbow etc in and then the upper tier has uh, Neonidus himself with uh, the other guns and the whip etc. Let's get all of those accessories out and see if they differ. Right let's take a look at his accessories. First of all we get the large base with no P on it this time and we do have a stand which can slide in. Now these are incredibly tight to get in i'm not sure if they i don't remember the perfect effects ones being anywhere near that tight uh but like the perfect effects ones if we get uh all what have they done they've done three versions of this at the moment i think haven't they they've done this the black and red and have done the evangelion style one i will be getting those two as well but we can mount all of those on the one display stand where you get the seat for his bottom just plug that in like so, that's the display stand. We get his crossbow. Exactly like we got with the original. Can't really notice any smearing or anything on the paint. It's slightly off-white. I seem to remember the original being a little bit more pristine. Uh, but this one's this one's slightly off, but it's definitely a very good crossbow nonetheless. We get two of these swords. This section here is uh, this is plastic, I believe. We do get die cast in the blade. We get die cast on the hilt here. Again, we've got this kind of reflective green going on. And the sheath itself, we've got some little silver accents along the top. We just slide this off. This is a really nice blade. Nice and sharp. And you do have a metallic coat of red on that blade as well. We get two of the Optimus Prime style weapons. These can obviously be mounted in both beast and robot mode. Can extend. We get his spear tail with several points of articulation. You can basically rotate these around at the hinge and bend them. It's literally limited to your imagination. Loads and loads and loads. And of course, this does disengage as well and forms two very nice daggers made of this like translucent red and this has all been painted up but it's a very thin coat of paint uh, it could probably be thicker as you can probably see a little bit of the red coming through there but they're pretty snazzy 
looking knives nonetheless. I just really like it done as a tail as well. You must have heard about me and my ability to break toys because we do get some replacement parts or you can also incorporate these with the standard spear and make it a little bit longer because you know I mean that what well, that's three inches you know that can make all of the difference. We get his lion butt which just pegs in on the back there and we have the space to plug the guns and the accessories on. Again, pretty nice paint applications, nice little regular accent there. The gold is nicely applied on both sides, no overlaps, nothing untoward. And last but not least, it's the Zoids style red mask for the lion. I wasn't a fan of this on the original. I'm still not completely won over on it, uh, but it's nice that they've included absolutely everything. And I also would like to congratulate NeoArts on making officially the world's worst and tiniest set of instructions. Look at that, that's, that's horrendous. But we do get to find out where the die cast is. Look, we get the die cast in the shoulders. This opens, we get die cast in the wrists. And we did die cast in the shins. Did we get die cast on the shins of the original? I don't think we did. I thought we got kind of die cast around the crotch area in the joints, uh, but this guy is remarkably heavy i will weigh him in the video but if you guys could just remind me how much the original leonidas weighed and we'll see what the difference is between the two because apparently this guy is made up of a much better plastic consistency to what leonidas had uh to be honest with you he feels remarkably good in hand as you can see he's got that exact same head sculpt pristine paint applications on this guy really crisp really vibrant as well they seem to have done a really good job at bringing out all of the details there it's just a very nice figure we've got some die cast kind of pistons going on at the back here you don't seem to have any problem with this ball joint either the waist everything rotates quite freely there's no tight joints we do have a double hinge on the thigh so we can slide upwards and downwards and we have a ball joint socket in there I believe and do we have a ball joint in there as well yeah um, some of the people that had the original Leonidas had like ratchets in one joint and ball joints in the other I have no idea what was going on there but this is definitely ball joints on both sides and it's a very fluid very clean movement on all of these joints oh, it makes such a difference having die cast in these shins that's such a robust really tight joint it's just solid it's a very solid piece just opening up that chest section and the gold is nicely applied it's a very vibrant green on that matrix chamber it's good you know nothing has been missed off it's a very good copy nice stiff hinges there and they're on a ball joint so you can rotate them as you see fit but again no uh, fear of any breakage right now let's attach all of his weapons let's start off with the rear of the tail section you want to just place this piece here you're going to go in through this gap up and loop that over and push this joint in everything's just going to push in and tab in nicely all of these ball joints line up accordingly yep. and then this just comes out of this last joint here and that's going to form the tailpiece if we look at the back of neonidas we have this tab here on a very stiff hinge that's just going to tab in to the back here. It is a very tight fit, which is good. That's a good thing. Uh, as you can see, I've already mounted one of these cannons. You just want to make sure this section here is pushed down. There's a slot here, and there's a tab just on here. Now, again, this is a very tight, very fulfilling connection. Once you peg that in, it's not going anywhere. And we've got a nice ratchet on there which goes up and down it's a nice soft ratchet but 
it's a very strong ratchet nonetheless. We can then bring in the swords in the sheaths and they just slide on using this hole here and the tab at the side here. Just slide it on and with regards to the crossbow, just push the handle down so that this tab comes out of the back. These are on a very, very scary tight hinge, but as long as you apply pressure to where the hinge is, I can't see that being a problem at all. Just bend this upwards, pull this tab over, and if we look at his rear, there's the tab section just in here. Push that crossbow in firmly on the back there. That then sits down nicely following the curves of Neonidas's torso, but please be wary. If you look very closely on mine, I actually have a stress mark on this post here already for me trying to push that in. Uh, just be wary of that. It may just be mine, but uh, yeah, I don't really want to get that stuck in there. And of course, last but by no means least, we do have the very Zoids-ish looking accessory which just plugs on to the top of the lion head and there we go there we have him complete with all of his weapons in tow I love having this tail whipping round behind it's such a good look for him now as you may notice I do have him perched on his stand I'll get to that here in a moment when we look at the weapons they're all this same width. Uh, there are no specific points in the hand to hold anything in. It is literally just a circular tab. And if you look on the hand itself, there's a small tab section on the fingers. And when you slide any of the weapons in, this section pushes against that part, securing the weapon nicely into his hand. And of course, as a preference, I would have preferred something like Make Toys or what X Transbot do, where they have that masterpiece style peg. But that being said, this works adequately for what we need him to do. Why try and fix it if it isn't broken? Now let's take a look at the articulation. The head can look upwards and downwards. We actually have an individual joint on that neck as well, which allows us for even further motion downwards. We can go left. We can go right, we can tilt side to side. And again, using that joints in the neck, we can get a deeper, deeper motion there. It's nice, it's a very natural movement. I mean, my head and neck do kind of work independently, and so do his. There's this piston at the rear here that can lift these shoulder pad sections out of the way. And this piece here is die cast, which is nice. Uh, we can come out, up and down, really nice huge ball joint in there fantastic range of motion very fluid indeed we have a friction joint coming upwards we have a friction joint going forwards and backwards we have an upper bicep rotation uh, are these biceps bigger than what we got with the perfect effects uh, they just seem kind of thicker and more filled out we do get a very nice bend on those elbows. We can bend the claws over accordingly as well, covering up that section again, making it look very natural indeed. Coming down to the wrists, they do rotate. And we do have the open and close on the fingers. We have that upper ball socket on the torso. Uh, it is hindered somewhat when we add all of the weaponry on. That's just something you have to take into consideration. Uh, we do get the abdominal movements as well, which is a independent motion of left and right. Again, I believe that's another ball mount below there so he can crunch right over. Coming down to the legs, we have a forwards and a backwards motion. Again, hindered somewhat by the sword location coming out to the side on a friction joint and of course we do have this double hinge in here as well so you can change the height of those legs we get a very nice double jointed bend at the knee the entire joint is hidden 
by this knee pad as well again making it look very natural indeed there is an upper thigh rotation in there coming down to the feet we have this independent foot guard we have the toes which again are independently articulated the feet are on ball joints which allow for forwards and backwards and some pivoting side to side heel spur is attached to this main socket here so moves when we twizzle the foot left and right now as much as i like this figure he is by no means perfect uh, the mechanism they've got for the hands it just doesn't really work it does grip the gun but there's no real resistance there if i was to shake this the gun would simply just fall straight out some of the additional sections there like the shoulder pads these do tend to just pop off nothing tabs remarkably tightly again the same thing is apparent with the bottom of the feet we have this tab piece here mine has a tendency to kind of pop off this piece comes away and i have to really pull this back piece back onto it to get it to sit as it should be so neonotus isn't exactly perfect but he is by no means terrible it's an exceptionally fun figure i always liked the original i was a huge fan of it and perfect effects before that you know their biggest and best figure was their warden and i think this took a very different approach it was definitely a risk for them obviously it's their interpretation of leo convoy but um, people took a very kind of undecided stance on it whether they'd stepped too far away from the actual transformers image whether they'd taken too much of a liberty with how it looks uh, it came across as a very gundam looking figure with obviously the huge influence of zoids but i always liked how it looks i love these kind of big chunky um, beast like hips and this very slender thin torso and i also really love that huge lion head on the side i'm not a fan of the visor i've made that quite clear since the day dot but it's just a very attractive looking figure and when perfect effects released the repaints of this i had no intention of getting them i just couldn't afford it but now that neo arts are doing exactly the same and they have done the evangelion repaint i think the guy's name was jason that did the original it was a custom it was it was better it was better than the uh, neo arts ones that we're getting uh they haven't done anywhere near as much detail as he did but i mean they seem to have jumped on the evangelion train much like the chaos did and much like the uh, wajang did with the mpp10 and it does look phenomenal it's a great cross between kind of an alien and a mech which is uh, pretty much what transformers are now you've noticed i've done a lot of this video with him perched on this stand the reason for that uh, there's so much weight in these legs but these ball jointed feet although they're incredibly stiff i i can't seem to find a good medium place for them they're either too far forward or too far back i tried to do various running poses and it really is with all of the extra weight of all of these weapons it's just a matter of really finding something that works for you to accomplish that really solid balance he really does have so much potential I'm just somewhat lacking in my ability and imagination to get him into a hugely gorgeous dynamic pose. Now I'm sure somebody like 6-0 or Maz would do a much better uh, stance than this, but he really does pull off that walking pose really nicely because we've got the added depth in the double height of those legs. It can just slide down, go right to the back, and it's a very stable pose. It just looks incredibly natural. Now, weight-wise, he's weighing in at 466 grams. That's 16.43 ounces. For those of you that own the original, how does that compare 
And what about the new version that Perfect Effects have issued, their kind of reissue version of it with the different paint schemes? How does that weigh? Is it built the same? Or are you better off waiting for NeoArts to do a repaint much the same? For a quick scale comparison, here he is alongside MP10. Uh, he does have his thighs fully uh, extended at this point, and still he's only really coming up to Prime's shoulders. And here we have him alongside Masterpiece uh, Optimus Primal. Obviously, I didn't have this guy when the Perfect Effects version originally came out, so it's nice to have some Beast Wars buddies. Now that we've had a nice look at him, let's get him transformed up into his Beast Mode. I personally am not a huge fan of the Beast Mode. It's a little bit lackluster, in my opinion, but uh, some people may love that kind of Zoid look to it, so uh, for the purpose of those people, let's get him transformed up. Uh, first of all, let's remove all of those visible weapons. You want to come up to this shoulder section, and it's going to just come away on this lovely ratchet. They basically rest. Nothing tabs them into where they sit. They basically just rest on these white pieces uh, with this tab here. You can't really forcibly push it in. It doesn't really want to stay. It's more of a friction joint and more of a guide, I guess. But yes, let's move this up out of the way for now. And with this section pulled backwards, you just want to rotate it around so it's facing the rear. Come around to the lion shoulder. Again, this may or may not be tabbed in here. Let's just pull this outwards so you can see what we're doing. There's this gold section here. This is going to go all the way down and this piece is going to lift upwards like so. This gold piece comes all the way down to the bottom and make sure that this piston section is coming outwards. Just tilting the head back, we're gonna lower this down so it's kind of directly above the robot head, pretty central, like he's wearing a nice flowery hat. Bring these two side pieces inwards. Rotate this piece around. It's going to bend over on itself. We've got a hole here and a hole here. Just make sure that these are pushed inwards. If we look on the inside, I don't know if you better see it, there's a tab there and there's one on the other side. We're gonna slide this inwards and we're gonna to aim to align this up nicely with those tabs. It's easier said than done. I think I had problems doing this with the original one as well. Ah. There we go, that's in and that's secure. Just bring this section down like this, there we go. And when they're plugged in, just gently push on top and we're gonna to rock this whole section forwards. Come to this chest piece, you want to pull it out and we want to rotate it around so it's facing upwards. And you've got this nice little cut out here which gives us some space to use the joints. The fists need to be facing upwards and then applying pressure to the forearm, just push and the leg will rotate out. Push again to secure the fist into place. And then just adjust those paws using that ball socket on the inside there. Bring the shoulders up and you just want to square off the front legs so that they're facing down and to the front. Come down to the rear legs. If you have it locked right up to the top of the crotch section, Maneuver it down to the lower location, bring it forwards, bend the knee, slide the knee pad section up, and then bend the lower knee like this. And then we can just angle those accordingly. Now, my knee pad on this side does not want to stay up for the life. It just wants to keep sliding back down. This one, this is fine. This one, yeah, not so much. And here we have him fully transformed up into his lion mode. It's a good looking lion. It's not perfect though. It's just, I don't know, it's just something very unattractive about these shoulders, especially when you see them side on. It's not a very nice cut in there. 
and the plastic down here does look um, slightly less appealing when you see it at this angle. No, not that uh, the Perfect Effects version was any better. It was pretty much identical, uh, but it's, I don't know, I suppose second time round you do tend to notice these things. I love all the intricate uh, hidden details as well. If you look in the back here, you've got some die cast pistons going on there behind these lift up flaps. You've got extra tabs, uh, which gives the impression of kind of hydraulic lifts. You've got the arch where we can use that double jointed ball there, which really does give a very cat-like appearance. And then coming around to the head, it does sit rather nicely over those shoulders. You've got this really menacing jaw. Uh, well, there he does at that angle. Look like he's got a big chin and he's laughing, doesn't he? So, <laughs> yes, uh, I, um, I don't know. I think it's something to do with the visor. If we take the visor off, I think he just looks a lot more menacing. Actually looks a lot like the Tiger Zord, doesn't it? The White Ranger Tiger Zord. Ah, oh, there we go. That's his uh, lion mode anyway. It's nice. Uh, I'm never ever going to display him in this mode. And it's not really transforming. It's more moving the lion from his shoulder over his head and bending him over. Uh, but who am I to complain? For a quick scale comparison, here he is with Optimus Primal, some MP Autobots, an MP Decepticon, and Jesus. Now, as you may have noted, I actually managed to transform him with all of his accessories attached. For some reason, uh, unbeknownst to me, I didn't do that with my original review of the Perfect Effects one. I took all of the accessories off. Uh, it really wasn't that difficult to do with them on. Um, it also suggests in those itty bitty tiny instructions that you bring the shoulders all the way to the front. Uh, I don't think it looks very natural having these all the way up. I just, I don't know. Yes, they're hidden nicely, but I, I think having a slightly broader stance on the front there, I just think there's something a little bit more appealing about that. And of course, if you really are unhappy with how I've got the weapons positioned, there is kind of his attack mode, which I laugh at. Basically, you take the swords off here, you open up the crossbow and flip this piece around so the tabs are now facing outwards, plug the swords back on but facing this way, and then fully extend the guns so they're facing upwards. Uh, it looks ridiculous. Uh, who needs a heavily armoured lion? I mean, I think it looks very kind of Shogun-esque at the moment. You can imagine they are almost riding in on him in his lion mode and they have their swords to hand, much like they're riding in on a horse, um, but just one with a big metal mane and some shoulder cannons. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'd once again like to thank Oh My Primus for the hookup of this product. I must urge you all to go out and support Perfect Effects for their original products. But if you're looking for some cheap additions to your official line, then Neo Arts is definitely a very viable option. I know a lot of you have gone out and bought the new repaint of Leonidas uh, in the hope that Perfect Effects have fixed some of those faults. And I have heard very mixed responses. But just so you know, I am quite manhandly, uh, yes, that is a word, uh, with him and he hasn't broken. And I will definitely be ordering the other repaints and reviewing them in turn. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, from myself and Leonidas, ah, goodbye.